Hello and welcome to the Melissa Ann YouTube channel. I just thought I would hop on here and essentially give some updates in a number of different areas. One would be University of Kentucky Master's of Social Work degree because I, um, I definitely have some updates to share about that. And the second is the direction that I plan to be heading in with this channel so that we can just, you know, make sure that we're aligned and that you actually want to follow me. And the third is imposter syndrome and also just acknowledging your truth, essentially. So with that being said, number one, number one is University of Kentucky Master's of social work um yeah so i had a, like a few people email me and ask me about updates and to see how the rest of the program went or if i had any tips or recommendations and um i dropped out <laughs> again so that was honestly really disheartening for me but it was also very very needed and I was really bummed. I was really, really bummed because I was, I felt like this was my calling. This is where I needed to be going, all of the things. But the truth is that a master's program is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's not just like a cakewalk, like, oh yeah, like I'm just taking a master's program. Um, so I had to drop out because I couldn't balance the workload and me needing to be growing my business because I'm at this stage of my business where I am redirecting and realigning. It takes a lot more work than say when I used to do wedding photography and I just, I knew what I was doing. I knew who I was trying to target. The wedding photography side was so much easier because it just, it was just easier. But since I've been transitioning, I've had to really realign with my personal training, health coaching, nutrition side of things, and just ask like, what direction do I want to go? Because the whole focus of Melissa Ann was that it's going to align. Like I have my From Grief to Gold podcast, which is a mental health podcast. I My goal with the Melissa Ann platform was that it was going to align with once I got my degree, I would be able to continue that on. And so I just, I wasn't able to balance going to my master's program and balancing growing my business and being a full-time solo parent. I don't have the added support that a lot of people have. A lot of people have parents who live nearby or parents who are, you know, in retirement or things like that. And so I don't have that. So it is just me and it is just me and my son. And so I decided to drop out of the program because my grades were not doing well. <laughs> I had missed a lot of like smaller assignments, which ended up adding up really bad towards the middle of the semester. And so I just decided to withdraw. And I actually came across another program just recently, which I'll do another video about that later on. But I came across a completely different program that I'm looking at attending if I get approved, obviously, um, or get accepted. But I came across a different program that I feel like aligns a lot better with my longer term goals in the mental health field. And so I decided, yeah, like it sucks because this is dropout number two for the master's program. And so that's a lot of student loan debt. Um, for nothing, you know, like it's one thing to have student loan debt and like it went towards a degree that you're gonna be using. It's a completely different thing when you have student loan debt and nothing to show for it. So a little blow to the ego and the financials for that one, but I overall just, I knew it was what I needed. Me being in that master's program and all of the things was just heavily affecting my mental health and my ability to be a mom and just all the things. So unfortunately I had to drop out. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to just like use that as an example for anybody who is pursuing a master's of social work or interested in the University of Kentucky. Um, the first is to let your let your instructors know. If I would have just let my instructors know from the get go, I probably would not have struggled so much with the balance. If I had just been honest from the start and been like, "Hey, here's where I'm standing at. I will get my assignments done." however xyz because i had a couple of professors who had told me 
like had you just let me know ahead of time I would have worked with you in your circumstances but because I am prideful and I like to think that I can just do everything it I didn't I didn't tell anybody and honestly at some point when you're in your spiral of like anxiety and depression you literally can't tell people like you are just so overwhelmed and like zoned in on the stressors that you just you don't reach out you don't know how to you can't put into words you you know all the things and so my biggest recommendation is if you are going through the master's program and if especially if you're going through University of Kentucky or you know any any of the other platforms just let your professors know what your personal circumstances are maybe maybe they won't do anything about that they're gonna be like all right well sorry like best of luck to you but I feel like I would not have had to withdraw from the program if I would have just been honest with my professors about my personal circumstances from the get-go so that would be my my one huge huge preface for anyone who's interested in the master's program so my second thing would be get your financials in order before you start the program like yes I could have used my financial aid and probably been okay but because I relocated to a completely different state for my healing process which you can see in one of my videos about my move to Chattanooga um, I didn't have a whole lot of financial aid to help me for the rest of the semester to help keep me afloat and so if you're going to be using your financial aid to help keep you afloat cool but if you're going to be needing to have additional sources of income get that situated before you start the program because once you're in the program like there's just so much time committed to your studying and to all of the little assignments which again like i mentioned in my first point that's where a lot of my issues came in i did well on the bigger assignments but because i was missing all the smaller ones it completely wrecked my my gpa which was really unfortunate <laughs> but you know here we are um so yeah so having your financials in order prior to starting the program for at least that semester like you don't have to necessarily have your entire year planned out but before you start the program make sure your financials are in order because after that first semester and depending on how you do the program some people are doing the summer program so it's like very very fast but you want to make sure you have your financials in order because once you get further into the program not only are you going to have the busy semester but you're also going to be interning like 20 hours a week so that's 20 hours a week of most likely unpaid interning that you have to figure out in addition to schooling and in addition to working or whatever you figured out for your finances so yes so one being realistic and understanding um doing all the schoolwork and speaking to your professors prior to your assignments being due. And number two is your finances and having that in order. And then I would say my third point would be to just give yourself grace. If you are at a point like me where you are like, look, like I have to withdraw from the program, don't shame yourself about that. Like, yes, the financials suck, especially if you took out student loans. Like, yes, that sucks. But ultimately, like we're all on this human journey of figuring life out and figuring out where we belong and what works best for us and sometimes you just don't know until you do it so if you do have to withdraw or if you do need to just take a pause in the program that's okay like i mentioned before in another episode i was going to grand canyon university and probably three or four of my classmates in that program had to withdraw because they were full-time parents and full-time employed and all of these things and so they had to withdraw from the program or take a pause in the program until they could figure out how they could legitimately and healthily balance all of these things in one you know go so if that's you if you're number three <laughs> give yourself grace and know that you are not alone you're not the only one who has had to take a pause in the program or how to withdraw because you realize you just weren't at a point in your life that you could balance it all and that's okay. So that would be my updates regarding University of Kentucky. I will share another video about this new master's program that I'm looking into after I have gotten that more official and started it and all of the things that'll probably be like a couple months from now so i'm not gonna really like 
share too much about it. There's a lot that needs to be finalized and again, financial situated first. So yeah, if you were here for the University of Kentucky, we are complete. If you would like to know more about Melissa Ann and all the things you can stay. Okay, here we are. <laughs> so Melissa Ann, what is my goal? What am I planning on doing? Like, why are we even here? So originally I, I started this platform first as like personal trainer and then I was like, oh, I might go become a physical therapist. Oh, I might do this. Oh, I might do this. Also, by the way, now I'm doing this. And if you are someone who has ADD or ADHD, multi-passionate, you probably understand those struggles that I'm working through. But essentially, I, you know, I turned 30 this year. I am figuring stuff out. I'm figuring out what doesn't and does work for me. And because I have such a diverse background and such a diverse love for things, it can be hard to narrow that down. But with that said, Melissa Ann is focused on whole health. I originally also included business and I might still add that in here, like a little here and there with like brand strategy and recommendations. But I think the primary focus is going to be on whole health. So that's going to be mental health, it's going to be nutrition, it's going to be bouts of exercise, but I'm not going to be like showcasing exercises or tips on how to have proper form because that's just like not up my alley. Like yes, I got my personal training certification and yes, I understand it, but that's not something that I get excited to teach people about. My bigger focus is like getting people interested and just moving their body in general and introducing people to different ways to do that whether that's getting into the martial arts community or cycling classes or cardio kickboxing going for runs all of those things that's more of my focus is helping clients or just people who are listening or reading or watching just realize that they don't have to just go lift weights that there are so many different ways to just get your body moving and this focus on just feeling better in general like feeling waking up more energized having a more positive aspect um mental side of things and just overall feeling good it's not about the weight loss it's not about getting trim and toned or like this huge muscle build for me I'm so much more focused on your overall wellness making sure that you feel good because you could look amazing and you could have one first place in like the fitness competition but mentally you're drained and you're exhausted and you're in a huge bout of depression and anxiety so like you could look the part, but not be the part. And so my focus is on just finding this solid balance between all of it. So that's things that I'm gonna be working on is like breath work and also spirituality because I shared in some other videos about like the, the, the oh my gosh, words are so hard, about the depression and depersonalization and derealization, dissociation, things like that. And diving back into spirituality if different degrees has been really helpful for me so i want to share about that in some other videos so and i do truly feel that spirituality also ties into my child just hit the dishwasher my poor kid he's like crawling in the background with the blanket very stealthily but so that's some of the things that i plan on adding um and then my third point for this video before i run out of room for today it's imposter syndrome and like pushing yourself to get out there. So for me, I've struggled like, oh, I'm a mom. Oh, I have things like my child crawling in the background, distracting me. Um, I don't like to do my hair and makeup. I like to wear the same like three sweaters every week. They get washed a nice shower, but like I don't, I don't like to get dressed up and do my hair and do my makeup and dress all cute all the time because those are things that are really exhausting for me, honestly and just aren't like who I am as a person. Like, yes, like I love to do that, like 5% of the time. So I don't wanna have to do that for videos. And I think it's also just something that's very feministic. I, that's not a word. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but essentially like there's this like status quo of like being a woman and like you should do your hair and your makeup and all these things and dress up all cute and then you can show up on video. And I'm like, no. 
no, I don't want to do that. And so I'm working on really giving myself grace and allowing myself to just be authentic and show up how I want to show up. And if that means I'm showing up in like the same three sweaters for all my videos, you know what, so be it. And maybe I'll surprise y'all with like me dolled up. But for the most part, I just, this is me. Like this is how I dress all the time. And so I don't feel like I should have to hide that. And again, it goes back to that imposter syndrome of me feeling like, oh, well, you know, the other personal trainers, the other health coaches, the other YouTubers show up in X, Y, Z manner. Like maybe they won't take me professionally or anything like that. Hold on. Okay, back to the whole imposter syndrome and being able to like dress how you want, look how you want. And this almost like overdone example of of like what a woman should look like when they show up on social media platforms that I know that I'm not the only one. Like I know that there are, are I'm sure numerous YouTubers who don't do their makeup, don't do their hair and all of the things. I think Elise Myers, I think that's her name on TikTok. I could be wrong. I know she's somebody who just shows up as she is. And so just reminding myself that like, it's okay to just be authentically me. Like I don't need to show up and do my hair and do my makeup to, you know, show up. And I would encourage anybody else who really wants to start showing up on social media or YouTube, which is kind of social media. I don't know what you'd consider YouTube. I think a bit more of like a search engine than social, but there's comments, so. Anyway, I encourage you to show up. And the other thing regarding like imposter syndrome and all of those things that relate to it is like introvert energy. And for a long time, I feel like I've kind of had to show up as this extrovert. And for a long time, I was doing that. And because that's, that's what everybody else does on social media. And I realized it burnt me out so bad for years because I'm I'm a one man show for or one man band for all things social media and networking and posting and posting and posting on all of these different platforms. And so learning the best way to show up that was authentic for me without reaching complete and utter burnout because the thing about burnout that I think a lot of people don't realize is it's not just like oh I'm just tired it's like prolonged chronic because you have pushed yourself for so long now you have this really long recovery period and I am just starting to kind of come out of that recovery period and figuring out how to avoid that moving forward so I have things like later which I love and I'm gonna get back to working on that which is a scheduling app so when I have my better energy days those are gonna be the days that I get all of my scheduling and my comment God, my words are so hard and my captions and like all of those things will be on those higher energy days and just taking advantage of that another thing oh I don't have it okay so another thing that I've been working on is I have this blank journal and something that I'm actually going to be working on creating myself. Here's a little better example. You can see um, where I actually wrote stuff into it. But one of the things that I'm going to be working on creating is a planner that's more geared towards the like neurodivergent people like myself or just people with certain like mental health conditions that they're working through where we can write out on a blank sheet and being able to adjust things like, was this a high or a low energy day for you? And then at the end of the month, being able to see how many high energy days you had, how many low energy days you had, and being able to even like see a, like an average of what you have each month. In addition to this concept that I, this method of using a planner that I started doing that has been helping me stay so much more consistent and not so much motivated but just in this like strong momentum of getting things done and not shaming myself when I realize that today is a low energy day or today is a high energy day and being able to look more so at the overall of my week or of my month and just seeing how much I actually did during a day or during a week or during a month and I feel like it's helped me so much more 
than when I used to try to schedule out my days and put myself into blocks of time, which I realized is just not realistic for me because some days that might only take me 30 minutes and then some days that might take me five hours and learning and and that I beat myself up about it because I'm like you can't even keep to a schedule what's wrong with you blah 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 blah, blah. whereas this I have my general game plan and then I'm just honest with myself about what I did get done what I didn't get done and like trusting that it will get done. It's just, it doesn't have to fit into these calendar blocks like we think that we're supposed to. So anyway, I thought I'd just show up and say hi. It's been a minute. I'm working on being a lot more consistent on my platforms as I get myself into a better mental health state. Um, but also just like, we don't need to like not like, we don't need to apologize for not showing up. I think it's important, especially if you're like a social creator, to honor yourself and to honor your mental state and to honor your personal circumstances. Like I've been working on getting a better balance of hanging out with my child <laughs> and like spending time with him. And it's really important to get that balance. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this and I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any topics you'd like me to share about, discuss, if you have any questions regarding health, like nutrition, or just advice for getting into like a fitness routine, any of that, um, any mental health questions or books or things you'd like me to look into for spirituality, I would love to hear from you. I have a handful of books I'm planning on doing some videos on as well. So, with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.